Some days ago, we were here in St Michael's when Father Bede reflected with great sadness on the empty tabernacle. And here we are today, again in St Michael's, with an empty monstrance, a reminder that you're not able to come at this time into the presence of Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. You're not able to come here for times of prolonged prayer in his presence, exposed in the monstrance. Come to you, me, all you who labour, as we read around the lunette here, which should have a sacred host in, but does not. It's empty. I'm mindful at this time there are many things that have been cancelled, changed, stopped, shut, locked. We all know the changes that we have faced. But I'm mindful of one particular group that have been affected. Well, actually, four groups, but they are the same category. Our First Communion children. In all our four parishes, children were being prepared. We were involved with that. Each week, meeting with them, they were filled with enthusiasm, looking forward to the day which was not actually too far from now, when they would receive, for the first time, Jesus Christ, body and blood, soul and divinity in Holy Communion. Now all of you at the moment are unable to receive Holy Communion and are denied that opportunity. The children who were under preparation have never received him. And they were so looking forward to the day which will take place, but not for some time. So actually it's a reminder for us to share with them. I often say at First Communion Masses to those attending that we should look to the children who on those occasions are so excited to receive Jesus for the first time, that we should look to them and have that same enthusiasm, prepare in the same way as we come to Mass. In many sacrifices you see a notice for the priest that says, Priest, say this Mass as if it were your first Mass, your last Mass, your only Mass. And actually it's a good idea for all of us when we are able to come to Mass and receive Holy Communion to treat it as if it is our only Communion. So the children preparing for the First Communion have that enthusiasm and we can look to them and be inspired and encouraged and learn from that wonderful faith to have our own adult cynicism washed away with innocent and holy faith. And likewise at this time when the children are not going to make their First Communion as expected, we can also share with them a Eucharistic hunger. They are disappointed, looking forward to a day that has been put off. We don't know when it will be rescheduled. We also are looking forward once more to sharing that opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, body and blood, soul and divinity in Holy Communion. We don't know when. So we too engage with the children in a Eucharistic hunger. And hopefully when the doors reopen and we can once more come into the Lord's presence to adore him and to receive him, this yearning and Eucharistic hunger will have deepened our faith. We mustn't take for granted this great gift. In the past, Holy Communion was not something that was, that was experienced, received every day or every Sunday. It was a rarer opportunity, something one looked forward to and prepared for. We are preparing now for our next Holy Communion. May our next Holy Communion truly be a Holy Communion.